everyone. Welcome to this workshop. My name is Tamar and I'm a 3D designer at the Clo Munich office. Today I will walk you through the process of building objects in Clo. And although we are going to focus in building a display for our garments or accessories, you can use the same technique to build any type of objects, really any type. If you have any questions along the way, write them in the chat. We are going to answer all of them. But for now, let me share my screen and let's begin. Okay, before we begin, I want to show you what we are aiming for. So this is the final result that we want. This is the structure itself. And this is the main focus of the first part of the, of the workshop. If we have a closer look, we need these type of shapes. So we have two circular shapes with a bit of thickness. We have three circular but empty shapes. And we have two straight tubular shapes. Okay, now in Clo, I want to show you the main feature that we're going to use. So I'm going to draw a random uh, shape, a random pattern piece. And here, and when you select a pattern piece, you can increase the thickness rendering in the property editor. This will add thickness to our pattern piece. It does not have anything to do with the fabric itself. It's separate with the fabric. It's just to the pattern piece we selected. So if I add here 100 millimeter, you will see how the thickness increases. And as a default, it's going to be rounded. So all of the edges of the shape are going to be round. But we can change that here in the property editor in the part that says curve size geometry. We can reduce it in order to smooth the edges a bit more. Or we can turn it off completely to have really sharp edges. So this will be like 90 degree edges. And this thin line that we see in the middle of the shape, that is the original pattern pieces. And when I add thickness rendering, it will add this number on both sides of the pattern. So I have 100 added. That means that I have 50 millimeters to one side and 50 millimeters to the other side. And this is the function we're going to be using on the whole workshop, basically. <laughs> okay, I will delete this and let's begin. I have the measurements that I want to use to build this uh, display. And I always recommend you to use real life measurements for this type of objects. So I will start with these two rounded shapes. So I will select the ellipse tool, click on my empty space, and I have the diameter I want to use, and that is 37 centimeters or 370 millimeters. Okay. Uh, the second one is going to be 31 centimeter, and I have my first two shapes. And now we can draft the empty ones. The two modules on the top have the same size, so I want to focus on the bottom one because that's the one that is different, and that is 35 centimeter. Okay, and for the ones on top, I will just copy and paste it. So Control C, Control V, or right click, copy, right click, paste. And we have the other ones. And now I have my shape. So I have the bottom, I have the middle one, and the top one. And I just need to empty this. So I will select it, right click, offset as internal line and here I want this space to be uh, 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters okay now right click convert to whole and this is how I can empty my shape and I forgot the bottom one so I can right click offset as internal line the parameters are going to stay as the last one I use right click convert to whole and I have all my shapes. Now I just need the tubular ones. So in this case, I have a straight line. So I will focus on the main shape of this tube and I will create the length using the thickness. Okay, I will close here and let's go to ellipse again. Click on the empty space. And for this diameter, I want it to be 20 millimeters and I want two shapes of the same size. Click OK. And I have now all the shapes I actually need. And what I'm going to do now in order to build this in the 3D window, and is that I will place them on top of the other one, following the position I want them to be at the end. Okay, this one can be here. And 
I will actually want to place this one later. I will place this one first, so I will place it on top. And you will understand why I'm doing this in a moment. So now we'll end with this. And I can also place these two pattern pieces here. I will place one on top. I can zoom in if I want to be precise, but actually I can always move them later. And this one I will place it here on the side. And now what I want to do is to reset the 2D arrangement. So in this way, all my pattern pieces in the 3D are going to follow the same order I have in my 2D window. So now I would like to place them on the bottom of my grid. So I will select all of them and with the gizmo, I can rotate them first. If I press shift while doing this, I can snap a, every 45 degree, which helped me to keep this uh, flat. And after I have them in the, in the position, in the horizontal position, I can right click and move to the center ground in order to have it really on top of the floor. And now I would like to separate them again in the 2D window, just to be able to select them individually later. And I can move them. And what is important is always uh, to keep a good organization in our pattern pieces in the 2D window, just to make it more easier for us to understand what is what. And now I want to select everything and reduce the particle distance to 5, if you have not that done yet and we can start separating these um, layers of the display basically so I have the bottom the middle part and the bottom part so the bottom I will leave there and I will bring up these two modules on the top so I'm going to select the first one and with the gizmo with the with the arrow of the gizmo bring it up for now I'm just eyeballing it then we can arrange it better and for these two little guys, I will add thickness to them. So I will start with one and so I want it to be 650 millimeter high and I will reduce or eliminate the curbside geometry. So here we have it. And now the second one, I want it to be uh, 1100 millimeters height so that is what I'm going to introduce there and reduce the curbside geometry so now I have my tubular shapes I will arrange this a bit better here with my gizmo always with the arrow and I will bring it up so I can use the arrow of my gizmo to place it in the position I want it to be and now I can continue moving the modules of my display accordingly following the height that I wanted. I can arrange it a bit better here with my gizmo and I can now apply thickness to all of these shapes so I will select all of them and I will go here and I think for this one I would like it to be 50 millimeters and also reduce a bit the curbside geometry. I want it to be just a bit smooth in the edges and I guess I can select now these uh, shapes and bring it down and this one on top bring it down. Okay so my display is basically done. Now I would like to add some textures but first I will add another fabric because I want to apply two different textures to it. So I will select, I will apply one of the fabrics to these uh, top shapes and I can now add the textures that I have prepared for this project. And I will drag and drop it from the other window. So here I will add this first texture, desaturate it and add the color that I want them to be. I would like to reduce the roughness and increase the reflection because I want it to be shiny, but less shiny than metallic. And now for the other texture, I will add it as well. Drag and drop, desaturate it. Uh, I will add also a normal map. Now I will change the color. We'll use the eyedropper to extract it from my other window, click OK, and I can also add 
a roughness map that I have for this texture. So I drag and drop it and I will increase the reflection intensity as well. And I would like to export this as an OBJ now. OBJ is a 3D object and for that I will go to File, Export OBJ, add a name to it, any name that you want. And here we can select the objects we want to export. If we want it to be a single object or multiple objects, in this case, I want it to be multiple. This means that although they are going to be grouped as a one unity, each one of those pattern pieces could have different uh, visual properties. And for the rest of the options, I will just leave it as a default and click OK. And now we are going to create an OBJ and this is a standard 3D image format that can be exported and is compatible with other 3D softwares as well. And in this file we are saving the three-dimensional object that includes also the 3D coordinates, the texture maps, the polygon faces and other object information. Now if I open my folder I can see my file. So it's a zip file uh, and I can drag and drop it to be able to open it. So I will add it because I want to compare it with the one I have now in my space. So when I first add it, it's going to be located in the same position where I save it. So if I now select all of my pattern pieces and delete them, I will be able to see the object itself. And this is what basically an OBJ is, an uh, object that can be read not only by Club but also by other 3D software. So I start with this, so you can continue building these type of uh, objects uh, and then join them together or you can do the following as well. And that is what I recommend you to do is that build the whole structure and then export the different OBJs. And that is what I did and now I will show you this project. So here it is. So I follow basically the same concept in order to build all of these um, different uh, pattern pieces. So I have the tubular that only by adding uh, the thickness, I increase the length. For, and the only object that is a bit different is the, this one here, that although I have a tubular pattern pieces, it is not a straight one. It is, it has some shape as well. So for this type of objects, I will actually create the shape. The really thin in this case is 2.5 millimeters and then I will use the thickness rendering to make it rounded. And other thing is that this is a symmetric pattern so I draw only half of the shape and then unfold it with symmetry. So this will make it much easier for me in the future if I want to modify something about this shape. And now we can start exporting the different objects, the different modules of this structure. So I did it in this way because I wanted to show you something else as well. So if you select several pattern pieces, let's say I want to export this whole structure as an unique OBJ. So I will select all of those pattern pieces and go to the export and in this case I will export OBJ selected. And in this way I will export only the patterns that I have selected and basically going to ignore the other ones. I click in multiple objects and click OK and when stop loading then is already exported. Now we can repeat with the other uh, pieces of this structure so you can group them as you want or you can uh, do it in separate ways. So in this case I will select these two and export them as a group. So export OBJ selected. I can add a name. OK. And I will basically repeat the process with the other parts of this uh, structure. So what I like about doing it in this way is that I will have more freedom later to modify the parts of this display. Because if I export all of this structure as a one OBJ, then I won't be able to modify it in any way. So I won't be able to move the hanger, to rotate this uh, part or to eliminate one part won't be able to do it so easily. So this is why I like to do it in this way, just to have more freedom. Okay, and now I export all of my modules so I can open a new file and I will start adding them into my project. And because this format, this file format 
um, save the coordinates, it will be, they're going to be added in the same position I had it when I exported. So it's going to be still easier for me if I want to still keep the original shape where I save it. And you can create this type of projects in order to present your garments in a different way. So you can create a more uh, creative renders for social media, for example, or you can even prepare this file to use it in a AR or BR environment. And actually one of my colleagues, Fernanda, is going to show you in her workshop how you can prepare your files to use it in those type of environments. Okay, I have all my modules now and first I want to show you what I mean with separate objects. So if I select one of these um, structures, for example this one, I will be able to move it independently and leave the whole structure as it is. And this is why I like to do it in this way because I definitely will have more flexibility. Now we just need to add the garments. I have some garments prepared for this, just to make everything a bit more faster. And, and maybe you are asking yourself why we export import all these OVJs and why we, don't, we did not keep the structure as a frozen pattern piece. So that is also a possibility. So you can also have the structure uh, and freeze it and just put your garments on top what happened is that the collision is going to be different. So if you have your um, display is a frozen a pattern piece and then you want to hang something on it and you would like to maybe simulate it, it will be more stable if that uh, hanger is an OVJ uh, than if it's a pattern piece. It just behaves differently. You can definitely keep it as a pattern piece, as a frozen pattern piece, if you want to, but be aware of that. I will go to render and with the final image, I will say goodbye to you. We are done with this workshop. I hope you learned something new today and continue enjoying the rest of our virtual user summit. See you next time. Bye.